a fulfilling customer orders ok. So, before that let me yeah. customer orders can be fulfilled only when we have required inventory. Typically, we want the inventory to be non negative represent a physical availability of the goods that is orders not immediately fulfilled or lost forever. Like suppose you go to retail shop and you want to buy something, if it is not there you go to the next shop, it is very rarely you will say ok I will come tomorrow and find out or we will wait for 2 3 days, especially at a small retail shop setting or a time sensitive item you do not need to wait for it, you go if it is not there that order is pretty much lost for the retailer ok. So, we need to model this, let us just take a look whether our inventory is actually going negative. Not sure it's going to happen, but let's see. Inventory. Yep, it is indeed. If you looked at the inventory graph in a previous setting, you can find the inventory as 40. And then when demand increased, even this simple setting, it went below zero from time period probably 12 to 15. It is negative. Inventory. So this we don't want. We don't want the inventory to go negative. So, meaning if inventory is not there that demand is lost. So, ideally what we want is a straight line right here when demand is when inventory is not there. So, what can we do? What can we do? We can, we can create a new variable. So, customer orders let us keep it separate. We will update the sales rate as per that. And since we know the customer orders, we directly change the sales, we change your expected sales rate based on the customer orders and the expected sales rather than the sales rate performance. So, let us update this also in our model. Then, how should the equation of sales rate be? So, what should be the equation of sales rate? Go ahead. Let me do this customer orders kg per day. What are equation we had for sales rate? We will just put it here step of 20, 10. Let me delete this customer orders. The expected sales rate is now change is based on customer orders. So, change in sales is basically, basically the expected sales rate actually represents the expected or forecasted demand that is what it actually represents. Now, how should the sales rate be? If we should not allow negative inventory, let us do the simple one inventory and customer orders and sales rate so minimum of inventory and customer orders. Should that do the trick? Units won't match. 1 first let me do both we simulate it let us plot the inventory graph does not hit 0 something has come in it truncated it right there. But if you do model units check ah so many units errors or oh, adjustment of in transit except I have not given. So, let me do that. Model units check. Desired order rate. Okay. There will be units error for your minimum. Minimum we are comparing inventory and customer orders. Customer orders kg per day, but inventory is kg. So, it is going to show an error for that. So, how do you fix it? 
how do you fix it? Even if error means model is not correct. So, either we have valid model and invalid model, not much in between. How do you fix it? I can't directly connect it, let us call it. What should the equation for this be? How what will I connect it to? Hmm? No. Winter coverage is nothing to do with maximum you can sell. What is the maximum you can sell? Maximum you can sell is how much is the inventory and how much you can actually so, it is, it is affected by the inventory good, but inventory is in kg and I want max sales in kg per day. So, you need to introduce one more variable for time, let us call it as uh, minimum order processing delay. So, let us say max sales is inventory divided by minimum order processing delay and let this be kg per day. Let the minimum order processing delay be 1 day that whatever inventory I have I can dispose it in the same day I do not have any issues in that and sales rate. So, instead of inventory let us call it max sales and customer order. Now, if I do unit check I should not get any errors all units are ok. So, to simulate I can get the actual inventory dynamics or inventory does not go below 0 this is what we have right here right. So, now this model is very close first we started with a simple model to start how to adjust inventory then we try to include features in the model to better decision making and then we try to include features in the model to make it little more realistic to capture what is actually happening within the scenario like we do not want the inventory to go negative because we are assuming it is going to be lost. So, that has to be captured explicitly in case it was not lost and if there is backlog then we need to create a separate backlog unit. So, we will do it later. Uh, and then we wanted to keep as less constants as possible which can be directly computed. For example, we had a desired in transit inventory, but we got rid of it by using math. We had desired inventory, but since that is quite orbit we decided to map it to how much inventory coverage is needed which probably we can get more direct answer to rather than uh, desired inventory we substituted that. So, we have only very few constants to start with supply delays, inventory coverage and time to adjust inventories and in transit and customer orders and model is kind of set for the particular echelon or the retailer. So, this is the model that we have uh, right now the complete retailer model. Start of the lecture the first slide at least talked about supply chain. So, let us at least move towards the supply chain to see how it is going to look. Till now we have model of the retailer. Let us suppose the distributor has the exact same decision structure as the retailer. I mean, whatever the re distributor re retailer is ordering, it actually is a order goes to the retailer, a distributor. Distributor will then check his inventory and supply that to the uh, retailer. And in turn, the distributor is going to order from, say, some factory upstream. Here, in the, in the only retailer model, what is assumed is whatever his order rate it is being provided by the distributor there is no capacity on that. Now, let us see if you are able to include a distributor model. So, this order rate will actually go to the distributor who will then check his inventory and then based on that will provide the material to the retail. Okay. To do that 
make a copy of your existing retailer model go ahead ah uh, or you can take a picture of it uh, first you have to copy it and uh, do not do all the steps you just try to just read it once with me open that new file set zoom to smaller size then pretty much what we are going to do is instead of drawing the model again we are just going to copy the entire structure and paste it. So, that is I am just going to select all this is a big sentence, but all I am doing is select all copy this. So, let us go for that file save as let us call it rd1 view zoom 50 percent too small. Fine. So, click somewhere in the white area first, then select all, copy. When you paste, unfortunately, you will paste right on top of it. So, without clicking mouse anywhere else, click on the black part right here. And you should be able to get this model. I got it. Please do it. So, you will have one set of variables with a subscript zero. Right, you have one set of variables on the right with subscript or a variable name with 0 in the end of it, and other without the 0. So, more times you copy paste, you are going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever that is what Vincent does. Ideally, we need to have proper names for each, but for now, we will just go with this. Uh, you got the structure. So, now if you simulate it, it will still run, all you have is two independent models built on the same screen but still the dynamics will be completely independent there is no relation. So, first we need to capture that. For that let us denote this part I am just adding a comment right in the top here uh, I think this is your distributor and this is your retailer. So, just for more convenience so that you know whom I am referring to. So, left side model is a distributor for me and right side is a retailer the one with subscript 0 is a retailer model ok. Now, for the distributor the distributor customer orders is not independent it actually comes from the retailer. So, let us add a link arrow from desired order rate to customer orders this is what he wants. So, that is what he is going to order whatever he wants he is what going to order. So, may customer order of distributor becomes equal to desired order rate. So, I just added this link ok. Now, I am to go ahead and delete this link ok. So, desired order rate 0 customer order is equal to desired order rate 0. So, that is all I did. You know, based on this customer order sales rate will happen based on the max sales that is possible and whatever is sold is what is going to be dispatched. So, this order rate is nothing but your dispatch rate. So, now let us connect this sales rate with your order rate. So, this order rate nothing but your sales rate only two links are here nothing else changed. I am just saying whatever order came in it he just gave to this, this distributor and distributor has a decision structure to follow and now sales rate whatever is sold it has to be passed down to the retailer. So, as soon as it is shipped. So, instead of sales rate you can call it a shipment rate if you want and this is your dispatch rate. So, this shipment rate should be equal to this shipment rate and instead of directly connecting them I am just connecting them as co-flows uh, so that you can physically see retailer model and distributor model. 
separately. Now let us simulate. You can check units, it should still match. Now, once simulated, click on customer order 0, desired order rate and order rate. Just observe whatever I selected. Customer order rate is what the retailer end customer demand he faces, that is a step function. Desired order rate is what the retailer ordered to the distributor. And this order rate on the left top is what the distributor is going to order to the his upstream player, could be a factory or a warehouse or someone else. So, let us see the graph. Here you can nicely see that as there is a step change in the end customer demand. This desired order rate 0, that is the green line, yeah, increases. And since distributor is ordering based on that, you can see that the distributor's order rate is actually much higher and exhibiting much higher dynamics within the model. So, this was one of the basic ideas we started. Forrester to look at the in, to look at the dynamics as what he called as industrial dynamics and came in his book and uh, nowadays we pop more popularly call this as the bull whip effect that we are seeing where any change in the end customer demand is getting amplified as we go higher upstream. Any questions? Let's simulate your supply chain. So, now imagine if you are adding more and more from this distributor, suppose there is another warehouse or there is a manufacturing and then there is another supplier and imagine the dynamics the supplier is going to see because each player is only looking at the information he is presented with. The distributor does not have any idea about the end customer demand, he is only seeing what the order he is getting and he is reacting to that. The decision policy is the same, the delays are the same, it takes exactly the same delays. So, for distributor also took 2 days to supply, for manufacturer, for the retail also is taking 2 days, both the time to adjust inventory is the same, both are using the same exact same forecasting policy. Even if they have exact identical players, still we are seeing this dynamics that is unfolding because of change in uh, demand and just the sheer presence of these multiple stocks and units which is further and further away from the end customer orders which is right. Questions on this. So, yeah, the only link we did was these two customer order rate of distributor is the desired order rate 0 of retailer, order rate 0 of retailer determined by sales rate of distributor, and we just simulated and observed. It is a good modeling practice to give proper variable names and avoid all these subscripts. I just illustrated that you know model can be copied and uh, you can do it. So, you can think of appropriate names for the distributor echelon. We call it shipment rates instead of sales rate and call it uh, supplier delay or some, something else. 